Over the past couple of days, I went on a very interesting journey as I dug into the history of certain brands. In the process, I discovered a lot of interesting stories. And in today's video, I want to share my learnings with you. So let's get started with these stories. This video would not have been possible without all the support that I received from various planners around the world. And a special mention and thanks to the planning group on the Sweathead community on Facebook where I received a lot of support. So thank you all of you who helped me with examples. Uh, it means a lot to me. So a special thank you to all of you who made compiling this content possible. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real-world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. Before I proceed, I wanted to quickly remind you that if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button now so that you are notified every time I post a new video. The first story that I want to talk about today is about this brand of chalk from Japan called the Hagorobo Full Touch Chalk. This brand has such a cult following within the professors and various university circles. It is often referred to as the Michael Jordan of chalks or even the Rolls Royce of chalks. The community of professors who love this brand often say that it is impossible to write a false theorem if you are using this chalk. So what really happened was, at one point when the business was not doing very well, the founder decided that he would be shutting down the business. Now when he decided that he would shut down the business, there was absolute chaos amongst the fans of the brand. What happened as a result of that is people started holding the brand. And at one point it was being sold for 20 times its original price. And not only that, it actually turned university professors and students into so-called dealers who would legally or illegally sell this product and there was a black market of sorts which existed selling this brand. The best thing that happened towards the end is that the Korean importer of the brand decided that this brand must survive and therefore he decided to buy the business from the Japanese owner and today this brand still exists, but the chalk is manufactured out of Korea. The next brand I want to talk about is PNG's SK2, which is a very popular Japanese beauty brand. SK2 products have this miracle ingredient called Pitera. The official story as far as the origin of Pitera is concerned is that in the 70s, certain scientists were visiting these sake brewers and there they noticed that the hands of these sake brewers were soft and tender as compared to their faces which were like old and wrinkled. After this incident, the scientists spent a couple of years going through 350 different strains of yeast to actually find the one which was useful and which then became the source for Pitera. There are some people even today who question this origin story around SK2. But the fact is that SK2 is still one of the most successful beauty brands in the world today. The next story that I want to share is about this antiseptic cream brand called Borolin from the state of Bengal in India. This brand is an absolute love mark amongst the Bengali community and it has been passing down generations after generations. It is believed that this brand came into existence as a mark of protest against the British rule which was forcing Indians to buy exorbitantly priced foreign-made beauty products. So the famous story around the brand is that on the 15th of August when India gained independence from colonial rule, the brand distributed 100,000 tubes of the product for free. The other interesting thing about this product is that Bengalis are so loyal to this brand that they use it for almost any and every purpose. So whether it comes to moisturization, or for fairness, or for wrinkles, or for cuts and wounds, or for burns, or mosquito bites, all kinds of requirements have one solution which is Borolin. There is also a fan-made Borolin video which exists on YouTube. The next story is about this brand which probably anyone around the world would be extremely familiar with and that brand is KFC. KFC came into existence in the 1930s 
but since its existence there has been a hell of a lot of intrigue around the secret recipe or the original recipe of KFC. The original recipe with 11 herbs and spices is closely guarded and protected in the company's headquarters. However, over the years there have been a lot of attempts to try and replicate the KFC's recipe. There have been a lot of stories around people having discovered the original KFC recipe or they have found the original handwritten note with the KFC's original recipe. But the company has never verified what the original recipe is. In a masterstroke of social media marketing, KFC followed the Twitter handles of the 5 Spice Girls and 11 people with Herb in their names. And these are the only accounts followed by KFC. So naturally, the Twitter world went nuts after this. The next brand that I want to talk about is Innocent Smoothies, where there are very interesting stories about the origin of the company and the things that the founders did to make it successful. To decide whether they should launch their business or not, they decided to do a very different kind of research. What they did was they went to a music festival and opened a smoothie stall and they put up a sign above the stall which said, should we quit our jobs and make these smoothies? People who tried these smoothies could help them decide by throwing the empty cups into one of the two bins which were yes and the no bins. At the end of the day when they counted the number of empty cups in both the bins they realized that there were more cups in the yes bin and therefore they decided to quit their jobs and actually start the business. And there are a lot of interesting stories around the Innocent founders but the fact is that today Innocent is one of the largest juice brands in Europe. The next story I want to talk about is that of Mercedes-Benz. We do know that it is one of the most popular luxury cars in the world today. But what we might not know is the story of its origin and of its founder Carl Benz and his wife Bertha Benz. When Carl invented the internal combustion engine, he wasn't really sure about the utility of the product and whether consumers would actually use it. To motivate her husband and to prove the point, what Bertha did was she took a 105 km journey from her place to her mother's house. During the journey, she encountered a lot of different problems with the vehicle, which she ingeniously tried to overcome. She is also credited as the person who invented the brake pads. It is because of the immense publicity that was generated as a result of her maiden journey, she was able to then convince Carl to patent the product and to go out and sell it to the world. The rest is history. The next story is about this dark, dry, Irish stout called Guinness. Decades ago, when the brand was advertised, it was advertised as being good for you. Although the reality has changed in today's time, and they try very hard not to make any kind of health claims, but the debate around whether Guinness is good for your health or not continues even today. What is also popular and religiously followed by the fans of Guinness is the famous two-part pour. This way of pouring Guinness is something which is extremely important to experience the brand in its entirety. Next, I have a very interesting story about this Czech footwear brand called Bata. Now we all know about Bata and we might have been customers of Bata ourselves. So the amazing thing around the Bata brand is that in most of the countries where it exists, people think of it as a local brand and not a foreign brand. And today Bata exists in more than 70 countries with over 3,500 retail outlets. And it's amazing how people think of it as a local brand and not a multinational brand. The next brand I want to talk about is CIA which we have all probably seen in some Hollywood movie or the other. There are just so many myths around what exactly does CIA do or what exactly are CIA employees like. Are they all spies or something else? So as a result of this, CIA actually has a section on its website which is dedicated to try and clarify the different kinds of myths which exist around CIA employees as well as CIA. And to make the brand even more intriguing, when CIA launched itself on Twitter, the first tweet read, We can neither confirm nor deny that this is our first tweet. The next brand that I want to talk about is an absolute love mark within the biking community. It's called Bullet from the Royal Enfield. It is one of the oldest uh, still in production motorcycle brands in the world. The story is about this bullet rider who was traveling in India when he met up with an accident and he died on the spot. And his bullet fell into a ditch which was nearby. 
So when the police tried to remove the bullet from that ditch and tried to take it back to the police station, the bullet bike would magically keep going back to the same ditch. Every time they tried to remove the bike from the ditch and take it back to the station, to the extent of emptying the fuel tank and even putting it behind lock and key, somehow the bike magically went back and reappeared at the same spot. The locals in the area saw this as a miracle and they started worshipping the bullet bike. And over time, as the news started spreading, a temple was built in that location and it is known as the Bullet Baba's Temple. And that temple still exists today and every motorcyclist who is passing by that route will definitely stop over and offer their prayers. The next story is from the world of banking. We all probably know about American Express and the, uh, the famous American Express cards. Well, what happened in the 90s is that there was a strong rumor going around in the United States. The rumor was that there is something called the Black Amex card, which provided unlimited credit and was only available to the richest of the rich. Because this rumor was so strong, Amex actually decided to capitalize on this opportunity and they launched their Centurion Black Card, which was only available to the richest of the rich. It had very uh, strict entry criteria. And staying on the topic of rumors, let's talk about Procter & Gamble, which is one of the largest consumer goods companies in the world. PNG faced a PR nightmare for many years when there was this rumor around the brand that the logo of the brand of the man on the moon looking at 13 different stars was secretly some satanic imagery. The brand tried very hard to clarify that this logo was actually about 13 original American colonies. But despite its best effort, the rumor continued. There were a lot of lawsuits which were filed by PNG against people spreading the rumors, but the rumor continued to persist. Finally, when nothing worked, PNG decided to drop that logo. The last story that I want to share today is about the origin of Ray-Bans. An American pilot called John McReady witnessed an incident which shook him. He saw a fellow pilot suffer using the existing goggles which would fog up at high altitude and if you remove them, the brightness and the glare was simply unbearable. And when he witnessed this, he decided to contact Bosch and Lom and that's how the Ray-Ban aviators came into existence. So while doing this research, while these stories are extremely fascinating, but there were a lot of things which were clearly standing out in my mind. So I don't want to give you a long lecture on what the lessons from these stories are, but I'll quickly point out a couple of things that stood out for me and try and think about your brand and try and see if you relate to any of these learnings and if they are applicable to you, go ahead and use them. While going through the story of Hagoromo Chalk, I realized that sometimes it is scarcity which can bring out the real worth of a brand. The other thing that stood out for me was that sometimes reality is stranger than fiction. So there is a lot of merit in digging deep into the past of the brand or going absolutely wide into the culture and trying to see what exists. Maybe there is something pertinent around the brand which exists, which might be there in the hiding and you have not used it as yet. The next thing which is interesting is that beyond a point, the authenticity of a story becomes irrelevant. As long as the story is intriguing, it continues to survive in its own world. A lesson which I found pretty interesting was that if there is something gossip worthy and it works for your brand, you should absolutely feed it. Sometimes the perception in the consumer's mind that exists around your brand could be very different from the perception that you are trying to build. Your job as a marketer is to try and understand and unlock what that perception actually is and then use it to build a real connection. Another interesting thing is that your consumers might be using your brand or its products in ways that you might not have even imagined or you might not have intended for them to use. And when you find something like this and if it works for you, then you should totally embrace it. Even if you can't embrace it openly, you should embrace it secretly, but uh, you should try and feed it in whatever way you can. And this is my personal experience and I'm very sure it is true for everyone that everyone is a sucker for a good story. If you have a good story and you don't use it, that is a huge opportunity that you are missing out. And the last message I want to leave you with is that try and create good, honest products with stories which are worth sharing. Your fans will take care of the rest. So that's all I have for today's video. This video and this content is based on examples that I have received. 
but I am more than open to receive more examples in the future and keep evolving this document as we go. Uh, so if you have any examples that come to your mind, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the content that I shared with you today, please hit the like button now. Once again, thank you very much to the Sweathead community and all the planners who have contributed. And thank you for watching today's video. I'll be back with more videos in the future. So thanks a lot.